Hey everyone, welcome to Relevant Rants. I am heartbroken today um, to talk about the topic that we're talking about. And you know, Mike, we weren't going to go here. We weren't. We, we weren't, weren't going to go but here. We here felt compelled. And I, Tom, is it fair to say we prayed about this? Yes. I, I, and, and you know, there again, you might think ill of us, but we're talking about things that are relevant. And so get, get, go ahead and tell them what we're Tom, talking about. Tom, I personally... And you can correct me. You're my you're my mentor. You're my pastor. Uh, don't say that because I'm if, not in charge. If um, I don't care if people think ill of me. Well, you know, I you know, Mike, I, we've been doing this long. How long now? We've been podcasting for <sighs> what, oh, going, going in our on fourth four years. Se- now. Yeah, <laughs> fourth season with uh, our lunch break show. So we're we're almost to the point where Charlie Kirk said you're going to hit your stride, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> but we're t- we're talking about the Nashville Covenant School shooting. Yeah, and. What a tragedy. It's heartbreaking all around. And and why we're talking about it is because today there was planned in um, uh, uh, Washington, D.C. They were going to have an event called Trans Day of Vengeance. Lit- and what's crazy, Tom, is it was literally called that. And it's hard for people to believe that it was called the Trans Day of Vengeance. That's what they were calling it. That's not a name that the conservatives gave to it. That's the name that the trans people gave to it is the Trans Day of Vengeance. Oh, the organizers says the organizers of the event issued a Twitter thread announcing cancellation. The event was to take place at U.S. Supreme and, Court. And they were planning a mostly peaceful protest. What does that mean? They're going to burn down the damn Supreme Court building? Oh, boy. So, hey, <laughs> you got it I'm going to get in trouble. He, no, no, he's riled. But you know what? Let's, let, we're going to talk about it because it's an, in the news again. You know, and, and there again, we have a friend at the Daily Wire because the Daily Wire is close to us. Our creative consultant, Tessa Jimenez. I think she's was, more than a friend to you, Tom. Yeah. Well, she's my daughter, Tessa Touchstone, married to my son-in-law, Danny Jimenez. So her name is Tessa Jimenez. She is a Daily Wire's... Um, Talent director manager. of talent, yeah, yeah, and so so Michael Knowles, Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, uh, um, um, uh, Matt Walsh, Matt Walsh, Jeremy Boring, Adam Clavin, they're all they're all uh, part of our vocabulary, daily vocabulary. Yeah, I'm talking to Tessa; she travels with all the guys. So our friend Michael Knowles was suspended from Twitter after posting a Bible verse. Romans twelve nineteen in response to the Nashville school shooting, and it was Wh- literally we have we have the picture up. Yes, Tom, it was only the Bible verse with a link. Yes, right. And yes. the can I read it? Yes, the, read it. it says, "Beloved, never avenge yourself." That's but a good leave advice, it to the right wrath there. Of God, Mike. You and I have talked. Te- how many times have you called me and I've said, "Mike." Vengeance of mine, says the oh, Lord. Oh, all the time. You know, we, we, we have a nature and we want to respond. Michael's texting out something that is practical, good advice. Yes. For anybody. Don't avenge yourself. And Tom, I can say, and I, I'm sure you can too, from my own life over the past 10, 20 years being a business, um, cr- crazy that's been almost 20 years, <laughs> um, but successful business yeah and and what's what's crazy is how many times have i had people try to attack me in one form or another and what i learned and i felt like you know not i felt like it's literally in the michael knowles bible verse tweet right there um let god cover you because the the, what god can do to avenge you is so much more than what you could ever possibly do yourself and you end up looking like the hero in it you know the bible says don't repay evil for evil so 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 as you go ahead go ahead and finish it i interrupted you it's okay so beloved never avenge yourself but leave it to the wrath of god for it is written and this is referring paul wrote wrote romans 12 19 um he wrote the entire book of romans but this is 12 19 and referring to an old testament uh verse i don't have the the address for that right now but vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord and he stopped there and he got suspended so it's like you know and, and so i i had a check with my daughter i says so michael got suspended for using a bible verse and she said yes and so so you know mike talked about but the, it they made they made him take it down yes. before they would allow him back on and i was reading some stuff earlier it said you know it might have been bots or whatever it's kind of irrelevant you're taking down bible verses but then what was the what was the meme or the the post of the picture of the trans activist with the two guns well it was katie hobbs um i think press secretary that says what we're gonna do 
to the trans when we see a transphobe and it was two guns and she they had- did do it and then they're having this day of vengeance tom if we ever had a conservative day of vengeance how would that go over well i think how it would go over is every um publication would cover it which not every publication is covering this with the truth and, oh. that, <laughs> and that's what hurts and, and so we can go to the next page mike and and, 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 that's- and so so as, so as we're there you know, we know New, Newsweek even put out something, and it says that the trans shooter left a manifest, manifest, not a suicide note, and it's hard to infer the message intended. You mess with our kids, we kill your kids. It isn't hard to infer yeah, the message yeah, intended. Yeah, yeah you, yeah, mess, with, so, you so, mess with our kids, we will kill your kids. It's textbook Unbelievable. act of domestic terrorism. How do we not see that? But if I, I was talking to two people that are very in the know yesterday, and they didn't know that this shooter, we will not mention her name or her preferred pronouns or her preferred masculine name. Is that okay to say? That's okay. Because the person is a transgender. Biological, identifying as? Biological female identifying as a male. male. Yeah. So, so, so as, as this happens, mo- a lot of people, when I was talking to two guys yesterday, and they're like, well, you're kidding. This was a, was a girl as a guy. I go, yeah, they didn't get it because not everyone is reporting it as correctly. It so, you see, well, there's a narrative and they want to, they want to put out a narrative. But the thing I was having this conversation with Nathaniel earlier, Tom, and I, I know you'll agree with this. We're seeing the surface level effects, right? But there is a bigger spiritual world. The Bible says our battle's not against flesh and blood, and this is a spiritual a evil sp- that's overtaken well, society. Well, well, um, Michael also got misquoted and got misquoted, but I believe the president and his press secretary that 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 in his um, speech, and I do believe it was at a event that he says that transgenders need to be eradicated. He didn't say that. He did not. He said the ideological thinking. The thought process. The thought process has well, to be eliminated. And that was another conversation I had with Nathaniel this morning. And I forgot that Michael had said that, right? Yeah. But here's the thing. I'm not against, and I don't think you are either, Tom, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. I'm not against trans people. No. The thing is, trans people are hurting and they're they're uh, psycholo- have psychological problems. It's a mental health issue, and mental health issues are running rampant. Tom, we deal with that oh, every we day. Did, we and, deal and with it. Showed in the front line, and some other nonprofits we're involved in. But the 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 people are being manipulated for profit, and it's not the people that we're standing against because we love those people, and those people need Jesus just as much as anybody else. And I think it's an important distinction that we make that. We're not against those people. We're against the manipulation and the ideologies that are being stuffed down inside of their head for a profit by evil corporations and, frankly, a higher evil that's in the world. Again, the Bible says our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual powers and principalities. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny because in the tennis world, Matri- uh, Martina Natralova is uh, saying that men don't belong in women's sports. That's the truth. It is the truth. It is the truth. And and as as she's saying this, it's it's people are coming out against her. Forbes magazine does a, a thing on it. ESPN honored Leah Thompson in Thomas. Leah Thomas in celebrating Women's History Month segment. I mean, he's a dude. He still got parts, right? Yeah. He still got parts swimming against girls. I really I'm really proud of Riley Gaines. She rips ESPN and just says, why have a trans swimmer having a tribute during Women's History Month? You know, basically she said he stole a national title by being a man swimming against women. I do like something Charlie Kurt said. Charlie Kurt said, um, why are the men, why aren't they standing up at these events where he's swimming at saying that's wrong? Yeah. Well, and, and Tom, that's, I had that again, another conversation I had with Nathaniel this morning is, uh, he said, well, you know, and, and he challenged me and I, I'm open to challenge and I want to put that out there. If you're watching this and you want to challenge me, challenge me. I love it. Um, 
But Nathaniel challenged me, and then he had, he had to retract his words, and nothing wrong with that because I don't have a problem being challenged. But he said, well, you know, what, what are you doing to make a difference? I said, well, one, we're putting out a lot of content, and I'm very, <laughs> very vocal, like one on all of our podcasts, but two yeah. on my social media. And not only that, Tom, you know this very well. In real life, I am as well. Uh, but all of the nonprofits that we're involved with, multiple, not just not just one. We're very involved with Children on the Front Line, but Kicks for Kids. We're doing some stuff down in San Diego. And um, there's a, there's a movement of God that's that's taking place, and it's it's interesting to see the spiritual battle that's that's happening right now because evil's rising, mm-hmm. but so is spirituality and Christianity in well, the people that have a voice well, and they're using their voice for I, good. I think a lot of people are just talking about it more, I, and I think that's all we're doing. We're coming out here saying that as 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 people want to have this ideological i mean last week what was it hawkins who came out to say there's only two sexes that's the truth male and female he did i mean and he's not a proponent for faith either i mean you know yeah but he is in the scientific field but we've we've talked about it before and i'm going to say it again because i think it's important and i'm going to keep saying it because i think it's important and this actually came um was something that i i got a uh, kind of a nugget but it's it's a spiritual truth uh from uh awakened church um, and um, it was God is both truth and love. So if you're not speaking the truth to someone, you're not loving them, okay. right? So um, th- th- and and there's no there's no distinction. Like we had a conversation in the office the other day about well, there's a lot of gray areas. Like there shouldn't be any gray area. The prop that's where the problem is coming from is from well, saying there's a gray area. There's truth and there's there's deceit and there's not my truth. There's the truth. You know, as you as you as you as we talk about it, we, we there there is. I'm just going to go back to Hawkins, two sexes, you know, and, and, it's and, the truth. and, and, and so, it, you know, if, if somebody wants to think there's something else, then if, if, if they're going to do that, I mean, th- th- there's got to be a conversation on the other side saying, then don't try to cram it down into the educational system. Well, what was or, it that Pastor Angelo said about uh the a paleontologist yes they're never going to find a transgender skeleton they're not it's nope. male or female <laughs> there's only two things they're checking one box or the other and and so it, it is we can um flip our slides but, here we have slides back there so so basically you know we, we they, they keep saying it nashville shooter is under care for emotional disorder and hid weapons at her parents home so apparently she had enough knowledge that she was doing something wrong, right? Well, but I, that's the whole problem in well, general. Well, what I'm saying, I mean, I'm just going back. I mean, this is, uh, you can, we have all of our links out there. This is on NBCnews.com. Uh, so, so she knows she's in the wrong because she's purchasing guns legally, but her parents have came out and said that they thought she only had one gun and sold it. So, so, you know, I mean, you know, as, as they're there, you know, they were strict on their children. They had a faith system that they bought into. And did they impose it on their kids? My, my daughters are 24 and 27. When they were at home, they went to church because they were in my house. Now they're out their own. They're still going to church. Faith is still part of their lives. But I they didn't hide things from me at my house. They didn't come and hide seven weapons at my yeah. house. And, you know, and so as, as, as this is out there, I mean, you know, you got to say, do the parents have some responsibility? I, I think that is yet to be said. I think they tried to raise their daughter right. They were still trying to provide housing for her, but they did not apparently agree with her choice of what she was inspiring to be a biological female identifying as a male they didn't agree with that and apparently it seems like the daughter would go someplace else to dress in her new gender identity and so and a lot of lots going to come out i mean i'm waiting for the mass festival which is supposed to come out today but if you look at it you kind of read that she targeted two private two public schools And in it, she indicated that the security was too high there. Mm. Her intent was to do bad things, which she did. She carried that out. Maybe it wasn't even intent. Her purpose was to kill people and 
have disregard for children. Well, and, and I want to make a side note to say, Tom, because uh, I've gotten the opportunity to tour some public schools, like in the inner inner workings, you know this. Um, they The public schools, at least in Kern County, are doing a good job of trying to protect our children and doing some things that I won't disclose because it, it will weaken the security. Yeah. But um, some of the things that they're doing, the measures they're taking are, are for the good. My wife's a public school she superintendent. Is. And my wife came home the other day and she's mentioned it and I won't say what school, but um, she's like, all I want is a fence around my school and all I got is a chain link fence, but they'll spend billions of dollars on COVID precautions and education, which is turning out to be a detriment to children. Yeah. That's what they're learning in the education system. That's what they're saying. I'm not just saying from what's coming to my home. My wife's saying, hey, give me a fence. Don't give me masks. Don't give me, you know, this ideological thing with the um, uh, um, the uh, vaccinations and stuff. So, I, so I love I, the I, term you use there, too. Ideological. That's an important distinction. It is. So, so if you're out there, I mean, you know, um, uh, um, I live on both sides of this because my wife is <laughs> in the public school system. Yeah. She's been at the highest level of administration in a private school for 19 years and in the public schools. So she knows what she's talking about and she knows how the funds are harder to come by in the private school. And so if you're out there thinking, why did this person attack the covenant Christian school? It's because she said it was an easier target, a softer victim. Well, because these, because this is not, this is now where I'm going to get upset is because <laughs> the true victims here, Mike, or what are the, what are the victims names? You've got okay. them up. Yeah. And, and we'll, this, we'll this put is them where up too. Tom, as a, this as is a where parent, I get upset. I, I put my uh, stuff. Tom, it makes my blood boil. And you read off yeah. the names and the ages so, of the so, true victims in this thing. And, 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 and she's not a victim. This girl is not a victim. No, the, Tom, was it, she's a it perpetrator. She's a killer. A hate crime? Huh? Is it fair to say this? I would say it was a hate crime. Yeah. I would say it was a hate crime. It was intentionally targeting Christians. Yes. I would say that. And there again, you could hate me all you want. I try to stay in the middle. Tom, I'm going to go again, and, and you can feel different about this. I don't care if they hate me. Yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, hey, you can't. I mean, there again, I if got If they're going to hate me for speaking the truth, uh, no, 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 I don't care. No, no. Well, I agree there. No, I agree. So, um, so and, and Alex, uh, if you're when you're editing this, if you could throw up the pictures for us as well, because I think that these people deserve yes. to be memorialized. Yes. Um, so Evelyn Dykehouse. I hopefully I'm pronouncing this name right. Um, nine years old. Nine. This, um, this person killed a her. nine-year-old. Yes. Mike Hill, sixty-one years old. At the twilight of his. And and year. I think it's important. Race race was not a factor in this. Yep. Um, um, he's African American. Uh, William Kinney, nine years old. Nine. Tom, I I have a nine and a seven-year-old. This is this is. Mm gets me going Catherine Kuntz 60 years old now she was the principal she was a hero she ran at this coward of a person I, I like your choice of words there Tom Cynthia Peak, 61 now, now this one um, stings Deeper. because my daughter knew her daughter mm. and it's terrible that she went into substitute one day and this person chose that day and now there's a mother and a wife and a friend that have been taken away from them tom is is it's hard at times like this for me to look at this and say well romans 828 right hey, well well how well we'll you, see we'll, 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 we look at it by what comes out of it down the road we we just had we just had a conversation with uh frank st Clair, and he had a great converse great story to tell yeah you filmed it for our man cave at our church um so um holly scruggs nine and th hey, this not, is the one that got me the most because yeah. it's the family picture and i'm viewing this and thinking of my family as i'm looking at this picture tom well he was the pastor of the church yeah and was his church. daughter that yeah now, now now you know this is what i've heard and I may be wrong, and because we are, some most media sources, the big ones, aren't reporting this accurately. But some people are saying that she didn't target anybody; she just sprayed bullets. I have this to say: bull. 
Well, the kid, one of the children was shot when pulling the fire alarm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm just saying, let's just, let's be honest. Can we just do that? Well, I have a heart for all people. I have a heart for if you're in, um, in any type of uh, mental health uh, 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 challenges. I had a discussion with two of our girls here at the studio today that we're just talking about how, how do you, how do you walk through life with, um, um, with, with issues? You know, and we were talking specifically about um, some eating disorders. We were talking about mm. um, spiritual things, you know, and, yeah. and they are all connected. So please don't hear me that I'm con- comparing this to eating disorders. I'm just talking about how. Well, we, I think it's important. We, co- we, because we come in to film a show and we get into a real life conversation with two of the gals here just about issues of life. Well, you say we care about all people, which is true. And, and, and I think that's, and, and I'm going to say that again because I said it already during this filming, but we care about the trans people too. Yes, we do. Uh, and, and I well, want to uh, make that as, as oh, a very important I, distinction I, I, because I, what I care about is the mental health because these people are suffering and having these issues that they think the only way to fix their problem is by tra- misconfiguring their body and the evil... Pol- a political and medical system are taking advantage of them for financial gain. Well, you know, I, I listened to um, uh, Leah uh, Thomas, and um, uh, he said that transitioning to the woman swimmer has made him happy. And I was thinking, well, I don't believe it. Well, uh, well, you know, Mike, I'm just, I'm just hearing, I'm just sharing what he said on this interview and I was listening it to the other night because I was trying to balance, you know, the, 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 the idea of a man that is about, um, uh, a foot taller than, um, this uh, other swimmer, Riley, you know, and height and build and strength does come involved when you swim. I mean, mm-hmm. it just yeah. is. And it and said it made him happy. You know, I don't know if, things are you know i don't know if we can always be happy right i mean I, there, there's days that you and i wake up mike and i can take us back to our vegas trip we weren't yeah. happy about that no. trip but we learned so much about yeah. ourselves and uh and where we went for the next three years but, but i think the but other that, but but but, I'm, but but as as, as if, if happiness is where we're going this shooter in nashville should have been happy because she's transitioning right yeah and so, so it's not just about that. If I do this, it'll make me happy. There's a deeper thing, and it's spirituality is what it is. Yes. They're, they're looking for, 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 for that, and, that's, and I'll, I'll continue to say that because I do believe it works, and I do believe there are people in this person's life that loved her. Yes. That, that made a way. I mean, she basically came back and apparently took out vengeance on a place that she went to school at, and she knew these people. So, so I mean, so there's a problem here that needs to be talked about, needs to be helped. I mean, it's Mike, it's like it's like uh, as we go out and help um, our first responders with the things that they go through. You need to talk about it. There needs to be conversation. She was about manipulated the- by radical activists, mainstream media, and a political agenda to to push a narrative. To uh, you know, frankly, again, and I'm going to go back to this. The, this is this is interesting. The root of the root of all money is root of all evil. Is that is that a correct statement? Is that well, a correct Bible it's, verse? Did it's, I misquote the, that? It's, money's not bad, but it's the the love of money. Thank you. The, I yes. knew I knew that I was off a minute. The love of money yes. is the root Be, of all evil because money we all need. Yes, it's what you might do to get money. And Tom, does it all go back to money? No, no. But all of this does all of this go back to money? I, I don't know, Mike. It does. Okay. It does, and we, and we can we can trace that. And if you guys want to have a conversation about that, would love to have well, that. Well, well, you know, but I, I just go back to why we started this conversation. We had the Day of Vengeance mark that march or protest that was supposed to be done at Washington D.C. that was canceled. I mean, you, you know what? I mean, it, it's funny because once people don't buy into this ideology of um, how you can uh, change your identity or your sexual. Um, identity just by saying you're there or maybe an operation that that once people don't want to buy into that then it turns to oh you are the problem and they've already assinuated that people not accepting um, a transgender person as what they want to be accepted to is is what causes and it's not what caused it I mean I just think people are starting to say 
it doesn't make sense. And what you're trying to teach us and our children is not going to fly because it's not there. I mean, I love Hawkins saying there's two sexes. He said yeah. it. Go check it out. You're beefed with him, maybe, not us. But but if, if you're going to say, oh, we're going to now take it and call it your fault. I think Charlie Kurt did a really good job at that this week. I listened to his show. And you may not like Charlie Kurt because basically he is a, uh, a you know, he believes in uh, Jesus and uh, he's a conservative. So you'll just write people. Off. I've got friends, and Mike, you can say it. I've got friends that are on the other side of the aisle yeah. and on the other side of the topic and yeah. all this. And I still have conversations with them. I still actually collaborate with them in things. But. We're not going to stop saying it. the truth. Yes, the truth. Yeah. So um, I I want to I want to go back real quick. It's all to, to because I because I think you know even even you got a little bit like wondering what I meant. It's all about money, right? So the the whole political thing, the whole uh, trans activism is for politics to get votes, oh, yeah. right? And to, why why do they care about the votes? Because they want power. Oh, what does funny. power come back yeah. to? Because they want money, and it's the people that are that are uh, funding the politicians that are trying to enrich themselves further in order to push something. I, so I, it's it all boils down to money. Well, well, well let's, we can go back to this because um, uh, I I remember. Uh, I was listening to the my radio show, and um, they were talking about Joe Biden's coming out, or president of the United States, who I pray for every day. Sometimes I pray that Jill Biden would have the common sense to urge her husband to maybe take a step back. And uh, Tom, I think it's important, <laughs> and you say you say this all the time. I want you to say it again for those those of you listening. Um, what? Why do we pray for even the people we disagree with? Because the Bible tells us that we need to give them honor, yeah, submit, and pray for our leaders. Because with them, they, they you know, it goes farther back. It says that you know, with with leaders, we're supposed to submit to them because they um, can uh, help us have peace or also discipline. And, but story. but I also think it's simpler than that, right? If if you're not praying for your leader, where are they getting influence from? Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, well, it, as we go, Biden came out. So I was listening. I'm waiting for him to come out and talk about Nashville shooting, and I hear him come out and talk about what flavor ice cream he likes. And he and, doesn't even know what day it is, Tom. Uh, I, I I was I, I was like, what? Maybe maybe it's the wrong cut or something, you know. But he came back out, and then he says, you know, we have to stop these mass shootings, and and, and that was that was his token statement for that. But 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 he he was joking around about it, but then he came out and he made multiple false statements about Second Amendment, you know. And and but he but he likes to form it around the shooting tragedy. So, 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 Mike, there again. But, but, here, but here's the here's the thing, and and everyone wants to make this about guns. Guns I, I, are evil. Guns are the problem. Guns do the, not kill guns, people. Well, you, as you said earlier, go back to Cain and Abel. Yeah, he didn't need a gun to kill his brother. You used whatever was handy. But, but, guns haven't changed in the past two hundred years. Really, I mean, more or less, they're still guns. They technology still have power changes. Power. Have, te yeah. Technology's changed a little bit. Guns has not changed. Society has changed. And what we allow and uh, the the way we deal with the mentally ill has changed significantly. Guns themselves has not changed. Tom, I, I don't know if, if you were, but I think you can speak to this probably. When you were in high school, did they did people have guns? Was that a more common thing? Well, it's so, it's so funny because I graduated in 1976. But here in Bakersfield, California, do you remember gun racks? Yeah. There was sometimes guys that jumped to school with their guns in the gun rack still. I mean, how many I, how many how many mass shootings happened back then, yeah, Tom? I, I I never heard of one. Never. So 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 as so as as we go, I I think Mike, one of the things that we have to remember is there were some heroes here. The headmaster or the principal of that school ran towards the um, shooter. What a what a heroic thing to do. The a little nine year old pulled a fire alarm. Yeah. What a heroic thing to do to counter what this um, uh, um, person that was set out to do evil and she accomplished it or he, he accomplished it, she. whatever, whatever. I'm getting confused now. But, but as, you, as you go out there and, and look at this, I do think that she was a manipulator. 
she was a liar because she was under a doctor's care. Now, I'm all about the red flag rule, but it's how you uh, 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 enforce it. But if she hid the guns from her parents, she wasn't honest on her probably probably her gun applications. I'm sure of that. <laughs> they asked probably that if you're under a doctor's care on your own medication. So I mean, this isn't the first place this kid got off. Yeah. When I say kid, she's 28, but she's younger than me, so it's a kid. Well, and men- mentally uh, younger, yeah. right? So, so I'm just saying. Maturity wise, it is, and and so as as we go there, it's it's going to happen. The anti transgender sentiment, you know, is going to follow. You know, I mean, I still don't. I, I still have friends that are part of the LGBTQT community. I still to this day, you know, I mean, I talk to them every day. They know my opinions. They don't agree with me, but well, and I, and I think, and I've I've said it too many times for me to, but the Bible says, "Love the sinner, hate the sin." Yes. Right? Yes. And, and, you know, and I, and I feel bad for the governor of Tennessee because apparently um, his wife was um, very good friends with the substitute teacher that day. And not only have they lost a friendship, but I, but, but I, but I know that they've, you know, everyone, you know, I haven't lost a loved one like this in this manner. And I've lost loved ones. And there's a grieving process. Yeah. You know, there, there really is this grieving process now that you have to let the families go through. Uh, there again, the um, pastor of the church lost his daughter. You know, I can't even, you know, there again, I mean, coming into the school that, you know, he's part of. It's just a terrible tragedy. And, and the parents of this shooter lost a daughter. Yeah. You know, so there's grieving that needs to be done. I think maybe if people could just, you know, be quiet for a little while. I know they're having some funerals now. Can I, can I ask you what might be a difficult question? Huh? How do you move forward from this, Tom? You if, know, the if you're in their shoes. Right? Well, well, you know, I can only speak for my faith base. The Bible says the Christian Bible says that we grieve. Every human being out there. When I, I've done hundreds of funerals, Mike. I've tried to add it up one day, but over 30 years, I've done hundreds of funerals. And I always tell people, don't cut the grieving process. Human beings have to grieve. You can't just stuff it down. I remember I did my, my mother's funeral and I did not do my dad's because I, I, I couldn't. But, my, but Pastor Ron did my uh, dad's and I appreciated that. But my mother's I did. And I told my daughters who sat on the front row, I said, please don't cry while daddy's doing the eulogy because I'll cry too. Mm. And I go, and so, I, and they, they How I, do you tell your daughter something? Well, I, my little daughter, Tessa, you, you know, she, you could tell she was just ready to burst at any moment. Yeah. And, and I got through it because I felt once I started, I wouldn't be able to quit. So, so after I did it, we all cried and, you know, uh, grieved for my mom. But, but grieving, and everybody grieves differently, but the Bible says we grieve, but we don't grieve as those with no hope. Because our hope is that we'll be reunited with our loved ones in heaven. And that's our hope is eternity. But we still have to grieve. You're human. There's nobody that's going to beat that. You've got to grieve. And that means, you know, sometimes I'll tell, I'll tell people, go through pictures, tell stories. And we do this, Mike, and you, your, your company has done this for people where you've done the, the uh, Celebration of Life video. Yeah. Picking out those p- pictures is a part of that. Yeah. Talking about stories of life is part of that. And 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 you, it, it's it's heartbreaking to remember it, people, especially even a nine-year-old. I don't know how you do that. I haven't lost a nine-year-old. But as you do that, you'll laugh, you'll cry. All of it's the human emotions. You need to do that. You've heard people say, I've cried till there's no more tears. That is a grieving process. You basically have grieved and there's no more grieving left there's no more liquid in your tear ducts yeah so so i would tell people to make sure they grieve through this process and you need a mixture of um, conversation and remembrance yeah pray first of all for um the uh, um, uh, um perpetrators family pray god that you would help heal broken hearts pray god that you would help others rally around them from all the communities, the straight, the LGBTQT uh, uh, um, plus community. Pray, God, that you would give them encouragement, all of them. Let your spirit touch them all. Lord, there needs to be a touch um, uh, from you to help them uh, move through this grieving process. 
Pray, God, for the families of the victims. Pray, God, that the victims' families would have comfort. I do believe they, they have faith, like I just said, that they believe in eternal life. And I do know that the shooter's uh, uh, family believes in this too. That, that, God, they'll be reunited with their loved ones. I pray, God, that you would take care of the parents because they've got a hole in their heart for their children. Pray, pray God, for families, that for the adults, because there's holes in their hearts, um, uh, spiritually uh, thinking for the missing and grieving of the loss of the presence of their loved ones. Pray, God, as you start to move, God, Mike's asked, how will you uh, cause these things to work out for the good? We'll see them down the road. We'll see the outcome of this. And I pray, God, that you would give a healing touch to our nation. Uh, I pray, God, the politicians wouldn't try to make the political issues. And I pray, God, the activists wouldn't try to, to, uh, to activate people in a harmful way. I pray, God, we'd all rally around um, a, 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 a spiritual significance. And I pray, God, we would find a way to love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, so if you're out there and you're watching this and you're LGBTQ, or you're trans, or you're whatever. First of all, I've said many times, even in this recording, we're not against you. Yes, we love you. We want to give you help. Um, but I think, I feel, and I think Tom agrees, that there's many out there that want to manipulate you and lead you down the wrong road. Yes. And it's, um, it's important to if, say, if, Mike. Yeah, and if you're if you're out there, take and advantage you need help, of them. Take advantage. Well, of them. I want to. I want to even go so far as to say, reach out. Like we can connect you with resources, yes, we and we pray for you. God bless you.